Okay, it is 7 o'clock, May, it's uh, Thursday, May 11, 2023, the Nimishillon Township Trustees meeting. Would you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Thank my name is George Pico, President, New Michelin Township Board of Trustees, Vice President Jennifer Leone, Trustee Don Keith, Rich Peterson is here, our Fire Chief, Road, uh, road Superintendent Jamie May is off this evening. He was uh, had, uh, he was sick today, and Jeff Shipman, our Zoning Inspector, is here, and Fiscal Officer Todd Bosley. Into the fire. Uh, go ahead, Rich. Uh, first item is a resolution to approve change orders in the amount of thirteen thousand five hundred fifty-five dollars for the twenty twenty-three Lifeline ambulance. That was because of the changes we made. I sent you guys the paper, but when we changed from the Ford, which we couldn't get to the Chevy, there was just some changes that they had to make to it. I mean, the good news is we're still, if you remember correctly, by going to the Chevy, we saved $17,000 over the Ford, so we're still good, but it still required to change it. Okay. Um, do they know when we'll actually receive it? So they brought it down for the breakfast, so everybody can see it, but it still has to go back. It's some more lettering uh, changes that have to do with some small stuff, but it should be coming. I want to get ahead of it so we get the check for them. Okay. okay. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion to second voting, please. George? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. Don? Yes. Second item is a resolution to approve the purchase of radio communication equipment from BNC Communications of Akron, Ohio, in the amount of $6,999 to allow for the addition of a third dispatching position. The county is giving us a position that they had at the Red Center that used to be just for Perry PD. So since we pay for Perry PD over the county, owns it and so they're bringing it to us so we'll have everything except for the radio communication equipment so that was the quote to be able to add that and that will allow us to have three dispatchers that they are three times great motion to approve second motion to second voting please george yes jennifer yes Tom. yes okay on to the road I'll do Go ahead. Here. okay i need a motion to accept uh make a motion to accept the may 11 2023 road report second motion to second voting George. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. Don. Yes. And do we have the, we can't award the bid material. I thought all the bids went to me. We need to see a dollar or something. Ray, but I mean, usually picks what he wants. Yeah, so I, yeah, I, I emailed you the ones he wanted. Oh, I see it. Um, <laughs> Okay. 
So I make a motion to go ahead and award the 2023-2024 material bids to Shelly Materials, a CRH company. Uh, they're located in Canton, Ohio. Um, and then also um, for uh, EFCC LLC um, for Crushed Limestone. Uh, and they are in uh, Petersburg, Ohio. Uh, the Petersburg Mines down in Petersburg, Ohio. They're out of North Lima, Ohio, as their main headquarters. And uh, I'm going to just say as we said, as submitted by June. Second. The motion to second voting, please. George. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. Don. Yes. <clears throat> okay, Fiscal Officer Todd. Yeah. Can I get a copy of that one, the approval awarding? Um, yeah, I think I emailed that to you too. Okay. I did two emails, one of the ones we wanted to award, one of the ones that we Do you have awarded. a physical copy of it there, though? Since yeah. the um, you can take those if you were on. Yeah, why don't we make a copy of those just so I can take them to the office tonight? Okay, the copy is not working, that's why we didn't. Oh, is it? Okay. <laughs> All right. All right, I'll take them and then since you emailed that you would have them and then I'll get them scanned yeah. back to you. Okay. Yeah. All right, Fiscal Officer Todd. Okay, number five, approved payment to Ohio Bureau Workers Comp for 2023 coverage in the amount of $1,886. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to second voting, please. George. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. And Don. Yes. Okay, uh, number six, approved payment to Ohio Building for April fees in the amount of $2,484. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to second voting, please. George. Yes. yes. Jennifer. Yes. Sorry. Donna. Yes. Uh, number seven, approved payment to Stark County Commissioners for grounds lease agreement in Molly Stark for 2023 in the amount of $100. Motion to approve. Second. Todd, is this for uh, mm -hmm. the for station the, over there? No, no, it's for the... Uh, historical thing mm -hmm. oh, me, it's in our township. Oh, okay. Yeah. I have a motion to second voting, please. George. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. Don. Yes. And uh, number eight, approve the minutes for the April 27, 2023 trustees meeting. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion to second voting, please. George. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. Don. Yes. That's all I have. All right, concerns of the citizens. Five minutes to speak. Unless you're a contractor. Unless you're a contractor. <laughs> and then uh, state your name and your address, if you would, please. First up, we've got Jerry Joseph. My name is Jerry Joseph. My address is 632 <coughs> Columbus Road, Louisville. And uh, last week, we were talking about the uh, 6147 and 4175 Louisville Street address, the building that was on fire that was released before that. Uh, Shipton made a comment to me outside of here that I didn't know what I was talking about and that I should have contacted him about this. But he does no, nothing for the inspection. That was all through the town. So I don't need his permission to talk to anybody I want to do. Right? Okay. Did you call uh, Angela Cameron? No. No, I did. And they have not given them a permit to occupy that building. They haven't passed anything, and you're not going to turn your electric on either until they get an inspection. My whole problem with I don't care who owns the building, who's in it now, or what business is going on in there. Other people have voiced concerns that you didn't show up at the meetings at the hall. Right. But you all three went and inspected this building. Well, we, we had to do that. You didn't have to do that. You can't well, we change did, anything. We're, we have to release the money. You, you didn't have to release it until the inspection either. We talked about that with the county. Well, actually, yeah, it's at our discretion. It's at your discretion. Absolutely. It was, and it's insurance proceeds, so it's well, not taxpayer it, it wasn't. Lines. It wasn't uh, illegal what you did, but, no, it was, it's not. but it was negligent. No. No. Well, uh, as as lawyers, a contractor right could go with the money and not do anything once you released it. No, the, the no. building was in disarray. It's been I, burned out for 20 years. They spent right. hundreds of thousands of dollars. So but, but your money was there to either tear down the building right. or to improve the building. But the they improved the building. Okay. Storage units. I'll need to give you that. Right? right. Right. But you couldn't do anything to release the building because there's no certificate of occupancy. The only one that can do that is. That, and that's up to the Star County Building Department. That's my point. Right. If you made an effort to go and inspect that. I just don't get that. Well, no, we just wanted to make sure that improvements were being made. We didn't. I didn't walk through well, the, the entire building. The inspection would have told you that had it passed or if it's going to pass. 
So yeah, I don't care who has it, who's yeah. got it, what it is. Yeah, but it's not what we We don't have a building department within the township. I understand that. Right. We don't have a police department in the township right. either, but you don't go answer police calls. Right. Let the, let the county take care of that part. No, it was our job to release the $36,000 to the contractors to make sure the improvements were done. So expenses. the building either had to be torn down or improved. And they obviously, did, do you believe they improved that area over there? I've been by it one time, yes, they did yes. improve. All right. I will say that. Okay. A lot better. Looking yeah, better. a lot. Yeah. Leaps and bounds. Okay, but I don't see where that was you guys as concerned in spending. Once the county is the only one. It's that our, our responsibility to release the funds. They asked for the funds to be released, so we checked into it and said, did they do the improvement to the building? They obviously okay. did, so we went ahead and released the funds. Okay, but still no certificate of office. We're not required to because that's our county right. building department that's handles that. And they said there wouldn't be, and they wouldn't get the electric turned on either. So that's the between the, the owner of the building and okay. the Stark County Building okay. Department. Thank you. You bet. Ron Salisbury. George, the issue that I have with it though, and it's just that it's, it's maybe the message the board is conveying, is somebody, I don't remember, maybe it was you, Jennifer, but somebody said there was a permit pool that was only pulled for that. Wait, right. that's, what, that's what the developer told me. Okay, well, I mean, but you know, the thing is, I don't know if you pulled a permit or not. I have no idea. That's interesting what you had to say, but I mean, you guys. You guys I, I think you're missing the point. Right. The point is, it was money from the insurance company to be held. I'm not missing the point. Yes, you I'm are, saying. because it was, do you either approve the building or do you tear down the down. building? They didn't tear down the building. Well, if they would have torn down the building, could give them back the 36000 as well. Tell me how I missed the point on Fourth Street, though. Remember what happened down there? What are you talking about, Fourth Street? Uh, where we, where were they backfilled the foundation, we released the money, and all the, all the dirt flowed up out of the foundation. Do you remember that? Again, Tom, we're not, we're not. Well, you shouldn't release money until, until you have the building department check. So you don't have a building. We don't have a building. Write the check. Why don't you be the first? I will. From uh, absolutely. Inspector. Then. Right. If, if you guys are good with that. Ron, Tom, you ready to speak? I'm ready. All right, go ahead. Don, I'd like to take uh, this time to thank you for having a spine, a backbone, and a nerve to represent us at a meeting. At the meeting. Now, as far as the other two, it's time for a change. You come up here, we talk, the same people show up in our area. You, know, you don't see them all over here, because they probably get everything they need and they don't have problems. But I can't remember one thing in the last three years we've had done. You know, at least you could have represented us. Maybe there's some other alternatives why you didn't. You didn't want to get involved with the mayor or the contractor or anything else. But it was your job to represent us, and you didn't. Set in the back out of the way. Now, people are going to get rich off this. We'll eat crow when all of this starts. You watch what I'm telling you. People are going to get to make money off this, and we're going to eat crow down there. And I'm pissed off about it. It's time for a change in them two seats. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Donna Fuller. I'm Donna Fuller from 5857 Grove Sale. I want to know if you, any of you know what is happening on the corner of Broadway and 62. Um, <clears throat> They have a lot of equipment back there, and they're flattening it all out, and they have plans. Do you know what the plans are? No. No, no, definitely not. There's, There's a lot of chatter on social media, but well, I don't know that. They're going to be proud of Grandma here, because guess what I did? I pulled in, and I asked the boys that are doing all the digging. I says, what are you doing here? And he said, is it upsetting you? I said, not yet, until you tell me what you're doing. I said, we have trouble enough crossing here. So the fellow, he laughed and he said, no, I'll tell you what we're doing. All the um, buildings that are down at where the old Kmart was, those sheds that oh, you buy yeah. for your backyard, they're going to move them all up there. Well, I said, well, I've heard a few stories and I said, I guess I could live with this one. So I just... I was curious whether you, because it, it isn't on the side of the tracks where you guys live, so it doesn't affect well, it's you. Actually city, yeah. But I will tell you, putting that light in on Peach is almost um, a joke to me, because I said this morning again, four lights, 
Coming out peach and trying to get across 62. So what good's life gonna do? Hold me up for two more lights? Or, uh, I found out a semi is 50 foot, so I'm getting educated <coughs> with this business. If you take two of them, a school bus, and two cars, they'll probably maybe another five lights. You're gonna sit there. I invite you to come out there in the morning and about three o'clock, and I want you to sit there and just surmise that it's full time, and you got, to, I, all I know is it says Sugardale. I don't know where Sugardale's at. Uh, but if you get a few of those trucks, and you need to get across 62, five flights. It's crazy. So I don't know who came up with that. Another question I have, I wanna ask you, can you tell me how you feel? businesses and the buildings that they build over there already, those apartments, they get a break on their taxes. They don't have to pay uh, for a while as they're building them or as they're up, the ones that are there now. That's not fair to us homeowners. That you are mean the Redwoods? The Redwoods, they don't pay. They get like a, an event, uh, an abatement. Well, what I want to know is, I don't think that's fair to us. Maybe we should get one once in a while, just, you know, well, the, the city, goodness of the their city, The city is in charge yeah. of oh, I know. Okay. And an abatement, too. I mean, I don't know what their abatement calls for. Every abatement, a lot of abatements right. are different. They're they call for different terms. And do they bring jobs into the area? Do they bring tax dollars into the area? Well, all I've so seen all the area down are, there is a lot of uh, businesses have left in Lewisville. Yeah. In that area. So I just wonder to know what your yeah. feelings were on that. Also, the property where it was sold, where the Fairfield School was, uh, did you ever stop think, where did the money go for that? It, the school keeps saying they need money. Did you ask them? Oh, yeah. So, yeah it's in a special yeah. fund. Mm -hmm. I don't have it just in case. Um, I know it has to do with the city, but we should be starting to think. 62, cross Broadway. The left-hand side could become Louisville in time. Because we're just sitting in, by the time it all happens, it's too late for us to do anything about what is happening to us like on Beach. And on the other side, we'll go to Canton. I don't think people are gonna be too happy about that down the road. I think we better keep our eyes open what area are you and go fight. Okay. You're going north on Broadway. Okay. 62. You're, where your fire station is. Yeah. On Broadway. One side you can bank. Down the road is going to become Canton. And this side they're already eating it up. They got peach now. They're going to put whatever. And at that meeting, did it? Oh, you weren't there. Don, you were there. That was a man that spoke was like a car salesman. He never really did say what he was going to do with that property, and yet those men voted on it. The two women voted no. Well, he didn't really say what he was going to do. Am I right, Don? Not exactly, Donna. What building he was going to build, though, he never did say He that. never did. Um, I think Don is referring to, like, from west to St. Thomas, George, that land that goes toward that uh, California home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that Broadway toward that home. It's got the big barn in the back there off of Broadway the across home. the street. Yeah, that that's what's going to happen. Utilities, utilities, utilities make a big difference too. Yeah. Sewer and water, if they're available. See what I'm saying? Make a big difference too. For <coughs> I'm thinking it's the water. It's, sewer and water bring development. They can have sewer and water. So a lot of times, if they annex into the city, the city says, we'll bring you sewer, we'll bring you water. If you annex into the city, we'll give you sewer, we'll give you water. So Peach Street already had sewer and water down Peach Street. That was already, it's already existing. And Peach Street, where Redwood is, the new development, the 26 acres, that was already in the city. Annex for, in 1990. Annex back in 1990. Right. So it wasn't a new annex. It wasn't recent from 1990. But they're gonna work their way further. Right, but if my understanding, Jim, you can help us on this. The only way you can be annexed is by a petition of the property owner. Correct or incorrect? Yeah, and there's still a, a hearing on that, and I can't remember any ever being permitted. 
to detach is the word. Yeah. Right. But I mean, without the owner's consent. Right. It absolutely requires that. So if you're not going to request to be annexed, they can't just do it. They just can't take you. They just can't take you into the city. Right. You have to, as the landowner, have to request. You would to have to you. get everybody in your neighborhood to sign that you wanted to be annexed if the utilities were available. That's my understanding, yeah. correct? Yeah, depending upon which procedure to do that, either a majority of the owners doesn't take them all. Okay. It only requires all if you use the special annexations, the type two or three. I hope they don't feel oppressed. I don't like them. <laughs> um, another thing, I would just like to make a statement to everybody in this room. You know, experience speaks for itself. And Mr. Bosley over there, first a trustee, then a commissioner, then a trustee, now sitting up there as a fiscal officer. I want to thank you, Todd, for doing all of that and for speaking for us at that meeting because you know what? It meant a lot. It really meant a lot. I want to say thank you. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Don. Thanks. All right, moving on to zoning. So, uh, Jeff? Resolution that's set for May 11th, 2023, zoning report. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to second. Voting, please. George. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. Don. Yes. Number 10, accept the April 2023 monthly audit report. Motion to approve. Second. <laughs> Motion to second voting, please. George. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. Not. Yes. Okay. Jen, you want to read those? Sure. Uh, I make a motion for the fiscal officer to request the Stark County Auditor pursuant to Ohio Revised Code Section 5705.03b certify the current tax valuation of the township and the dollar amount that would be generated by a five mil renewal fire levy at the next general election on November 7, 2023. Second. A motion and a second. Louie? George. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. Don. Yes. Okay, number 12, I make a motion for a resolution for the fiscal officer to request the Stark County Auditor pursuant to Ohio Revised Code Section 5705.03b to certify the current tax valuation of the township in the dollar amount that will be generated by a one mil renewal road levy at the next general election on November 7, 2023. Second. Motion to second voting, please. George. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. Don. Yes. Can we discuss that for just a minute? Sure. Okay, so I talked to the Board of Elections and there's a new process now for the second part of this. So I have to get an evaluation from the auditor, which we're in the process of working on. And then I'll bring it to you guys and we'll get it all set up. So I'm working with Travis Seacrest at the Board of Elections. Okay. Uh, number 13, motion for a resolution to purchase a one year essentials plan with MailChimp at $13 per month billed annually. Second. Motion to second voting, please. Yeah, like, what is this about? It's to gather email addresses so we can do like an email campaign. So when we gather residents' email addresses, MailChimp organizes it so we can send the broadcast uh, email. That and yeah, and yeah if, I, if I can let you know. Go ahead. What we're talking about is because the Herald will no longer be published. Right. And then people can leave their email addresses. And when there is a uh, legal notice that we normally have put into the Herald, we'll send out an email to anybody who requests no, it. That's good. That's good idea. Oh, yeah, really good. Thank you for that. Jennifer, where, are you, where are you collecting these at? On our website. Well, I'm just talking about the email. You would have to give it to us. We need your email address, and then you'll be on the list. It's not set up yet, though. We're going to have a button on the website so you can go. Yeah, you've got to click online. Or if you can call, you can call and get to Sandy if you want, or hand it to me. It's fine. But hopefully by the next meeting, it'll be up to where we can let you know that you can get on and read it. So the goal is to have it before the Herald disappears. Number 14, like oh, we got to vote. vote. Oh, oh, sorry. I have a motion. You seconded it, right? Yes. Motion to second voting, please. George. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. Scott. Yes. Okay. The next one was the life insurance update. Um, we had some confusion. There was apparently only 10 employees covered. Um, got the list from uh, Kim Sanford. And then we went through um, who actually pays for the health insurance. And we have uh, 22 names. 10 people covered, so they're primarily the fire department. So I gave the list to Rich and the enrollment forms, then he needs to give them to Kelly to get them set up. Yep. But I don't 
not this. This is for life insurance. Yes. They have health insurance. Right. So this is to add yeah. to the life insurance. Yeah, so that's ample. Okay, Rich. Yep. And then the second one was, did you have an update for the diversification of funds that we asked? Yeah, we can we can basically deal with any financial institutions locally. It's just that we have could you guys tell me who you want to deal with? Yeah, we kind of discussed like JP Morgan, if you could call and find out okay. how we could break it up without locking it up. All right. And what they could offer us as a government. That'd be great. That's Chase, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um the, the only thing I wanted to talk about was you guys kind of need to figure out like how much you think you're gonna spend. Because we may have to say to them, we'll tie up a quarter of a million for a certain right. period of time. That's what I was so thinking. If you, we could do like a money market or a CD, that's okay. what I wanted you to find right. out what instruments we, we can do without tying the money up. We can do um, we can do that. We can do money market. I believe we can do uh, CDs. You want me to check with Chase? Is there, is there anybody else? Um, we'll also see if Huntington. We already have a lot there. Okay. Can we bust it up? Keep it there, but bust it up. I'm not sure if it's the naming. I think once it's the name, it's, it's it. The name. So yeah. I just wanted to verify that. I mean, if we had different, you know, personal accounts, you can name right. different beneficiaries right. and get uh, coverage. You get FDIC yeah. coverage. That's I called the FDIC. Fear. I actually got called from FDIC to discuss it. Well, yeah, I never thought they would call me back, but yeah, you have to do the names. Yeah, so right. that doesn't help us. So we're gonna have That's to do different institutions. But our problem is we our main it. checkbook is Huntington. So. I have to have enough money there right, for like if you guys want to buy a truck or we got unexpected things that come up. So we may only be able to maybe maneuver like a half a million dollars because we're already at Star. And I don't think anybody's going to match Star's amount. It's not about that. It's about I protecting know. the money. I, right. I understand yeah. that. So, so Chase, oh, and you want me to ask Huntington if there's anything else they yes, can do? Yes, we can I don't do. think there is. And is there anybody else? Locally, I don't think. I mean, there's a big. We want a bigger bank. I think you want a bigger bank, somebody that has the coverage. With bigger assets. You want me to? Um, Unless you have somebody in mind. Well, I mean, like you know, like there's a, there's a lot of online banks, Synchrony and Citibank and all of those, but that gets kind of complicated once you start getting the online stuff. Yeah. It really has to be somebody local to audit that can deal with. So yeah, it's, it's nice to go to a branch if you absolutely have to as well. Yeah. So we'll, we can start. Well, let me start with Chase and see what, and see what they, they can, can do for us. All right, okay, thanks, Tom. Uh, this open agenda. Um, Number 16? No, yeah, I don't even know. Okay, I did. Oh, okay. Okay, displaying the road department's new tractor in front of the motor at the Lewis. But hey, they're having what they call a touch a truck event <coughs> on the second Friday in, in June, on June the 9th. The equipment will be parked on the part of Main Street between Mill and Church Street. Um, the equipment will arrive at 5 o'clock, 4 or 5 o'clock. We'll stay till 8 o'clock. It's for the kids, basically, to kind of yeah. Like, see a big tractor. Yeah, see a big tractor or see a big loader. Um, I don't know the fire department, they contact you at all. Mm -hmm. yeah. City's probably going to have their fire trucks there. Um, I thought it was a good idea, sure. and I'd be fine with it. Yeah, fine. Um, you'd have to have a couple guys take them down and then a couple guys bring them home, but I think it, um, I'd like to go ahead and you want to make a motion? Sure. Okay. I'll make Wait, a motion. One thing on that. Jamie was not in today, so um, I did speak with Lee on that, and he said as long as the people are available to take the two pieces, they don't know if there are going to be two people or one person go back and forth, but you know, they're up willing as long. You haven't sure to drive it. <laughs> yeah, it's just for so We'll get them home. Oh, yeah, you might want to have somebody monitor it, you know, so it doesn't get too Well, that was my fear, too. You don't want to just leave them down there. So you got to have somebody there. Maybe you could do it, Don, because otherwise we're paying overtime. And right. Have to be right now, I'm sure. We can split up the evening. If you do part, I'll do part. Okay. Okay, so I make a motion to approve displaying the road department's tractor in front of loader at the Louisville Touch a Truck event on Friday, June 9th. Second. Motion to second. Voting, please. George. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. Don. Yes. Okay, the next one I make a motion to enter into executive session authorized under ORC 121. Point two two G one to consider the appointment, employment, dismissal, discipline, promotion, demotion, or compensation of a public employee or official, or the investigation of charges or complaints against a public employee, official, licensee, or regulated individual, unless the employee, official, licensee, or regulated in individual requests a public hearing by Division G one of Section one two one point two two of the Revised Code at seven twenty eight. Yeah. Motion to second. Voting, please. George. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. Don. Okay. <laughs>